What is good y'all and welcome back to my channel. So today I am reviewing uh, my favorite Beatles album, uh, Rubber Soul. Now just like with Illmatic, it's been a long time since I've uh, listened to the Beatles. So this was very uh, reminiscent going through this album that I'm going to go over today. Now unlike Illmatic, I'm not going to go through every song because I don't really, I'm not, I'm not tied to every song now, but I'm going to go over the songs that were personal and appropriate to me and ones that hit home to me and ones that I just like in general. Now, uh, just to go over a little backstory with the Beatles before Rubber Soul came out, as many people know, they were a very boy bandy uh, type of band. You know, they had the suits, very trying to present themselves as very appropriate, not only for their fans, but really for the parents of their fans to sell more records. Rubber Soul, they started to dress like dudes, just like regular guys that hang out. And a lot of this was inspired, um, this album was inspired after the Beatles smoked weed with uh, Bob Dylan. They started to get very, a lot more introspective and turned from, you know, that I want to hold your hand type of vibe from me to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That type of poppy, boy bandy type of vibe to something more contemporary and something more deep. And I can't imagine listening to this album back in 1965 um, and just because I uh, knowing that sound and then the type of music that they get into on this uh, and the type of lyrics specifically that they get into on this. Now, as I mentioned with Illmatic and this like I'm, this goes for most music in general, with the exception of who I'm going to be reviewing next week, who kind of hits on all notes, no pun intended. Um, I'm someone who prefers feeling over form, and which is to say, I prefer um, prefer more lyrical type of experience so when someone's kind of telling me about an experience they went through hey i went through this i had a bad day this i went through this heartbreak i went through this i went through that did you go through this okay we're gonna go through this together and that's what music should be it should be about getting you through a uh a little bit of a rough patch in your life or just making you feel not so alone because when i listen to this album for the first time and i'll get into the what got me on to this album specifically at the end with the last song which is my favorite beatles song but also one of my favorite songs of all time um and kind of just just making you reminisce and appreciate um, your alone time. And just, it, it, hit, it hit home for me on a lot of uh, specific notes. So again, I'm not going to go through every single song. I'm going to go through just the ones that hit home to me and some other ones in there that I just think fit well um, within there. Now, with if anybody who knows the Beatles, up until their album, just after this, Revolver, it, there was two different versions of every album. There was the UK version that was put up by EMI and Capital records now capital records put out the american version now that's what i own just because it's cheaper and more available and that's what i bought but i'm going to be going through the uk version which is the beatles preferred um release of the album because they you know they approved the track listing it, some of the songs were rearranged for probably marketing purposes here in the u.s so i'm gonna go through the album and um i am gonna go through a lot of the lyrics now last week when i did Illmatic, i tried to go off the top of head with a lot of stuff and i messed up so i'm gonna be referencing stuff although i do have a relative um remembrance of some of this stuff now the first uh song on the album is drive my car which is a paul mccartney uh primarily paul mccartney song baby you can drive my car i'm sure a lot of people heard this song before it's probably been in commercials you probably heard it in the store maybe but very um upbeat very getting the uh album started type of song and not my favorite uh, song on the album by a long stretch but i like it getting the car started getting the album started and it's very upbeat very positive and it has a little bit of old beatles and new beatles so old beatles like i said were very sing-songy and very lovey romance hey love letters to the song stuff, stuff. this is kind of like i'm driving with my girl type of song baby you can drive my car letting the girl drive the car so it's a little it's kind of easing you into what's to come now the first song on the album that really hits home to me and i like is the second song on the album which is norwegian wood um john lennon's song primarily what's really cool about this song where a lot of the beatles songs are primarily you know rhythm guitar some nice backing drums from ringo uh bass from paul mccartney this song brings in a sitar george harrison um the lead guitar player went over to india and was heavily influenced uh by indian music and so he brought a uh, indian instrument over the sitar to play on um this album this is one of the first there's other lot, a lot of beatles songs that have this on there but this is one of the first ones but what's really cool about norwegian wood now if you heard this song for the first time in 1965 and you listen to all the other beatles songs you had to be like what because what this song is basically about is about a guy who goes over a girl's house and wants to get laid doesn't get laid gets rejected that night 
gets rejected the next morning, and then takes revenge on her. So I'm going to go through um, the, some of the lyrics. I once had a girl, or should I say she once had me. So that kind of tells you where it's going. She, so I kind of got got by this girl. I kind of got led down the beaten path by her. I sat on her rug, biding my time, drinking my wine. We talked until two, and then she said, it's time for bed. Um, she, she told me she worked in the morning and started to laugh. Anybody that tells you like you're on like a date, something like that, somebody tells you I work in the morning, like, oh, okay, I see what it is. She started to laugh. I told her I didn't, and I crawled off to sleep in the bath. So I just imagine John Lennon just being feeling like, oh man, I'm not getting laid, are you serious? So he just goes in the bathtub and just gets in kind of like the uh, fetal position. Hold on, let me refresh the computer real quick. Um, and then the last part of it, and then it cuts to some sitar, which is really cool. And when I awoke, I was alone. This bird had flown. So I lit a fire. Isn't it good, Norwegian wood? You didn't lay me the night before. You ain't laying me this morning. I'm mad, I'm burning your place down. So it's a very much a revenge song. And like, if you're actually listening to the lyrics in this in 1965, like, whoa, did John Lennon just say he's gonna burn down this girl's house? I thought he's supposed to be writing me a love letter and loving me and holding my hand. And so it's a very cool, um, like I said, Drive My Car kind of eases you in to the album. And Norwegian Woods is like, oh, these guys kind of have hatred toward women, too. Now, the next song is uh, Nowhere Man, which is also a John Lennon song. Now, this is a little bit more personal. This has nothing. This is probably one of their first, I would say, like introspective songs. It really has nothing to do with romance, girls, none of that. This is just, um, so I'm going to go through a lot of the lyrics. This is one of my favorite, one of the better songs, I think, on the album. He's a real nowhere man sitting in his nowhere land, making all his nowhere plans for nobody. So as someone who spent a lot of time uh, alone in their room, listening to music uh, back in the days, I didn't, I didn't really get into movies till later because I didn't have a TV in my room. So music was my art form that I listened to. And I'd listen to it alone. I'd put on the headphones and I would just get uh, swept away. And even to this day, I've always appreciated my alone time. He doesn't have a point of view, knows not where he's going to. Isn't he a bit like you and me? So it's like you're making all these nowhere plans. Like you just, what, what am I? What am I doing? Like I'm making all these plans. I'm going to college. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. You know, what, what is it all for? Like you know, you feel very uh, lost. Let me just take your time. Don't hurry. Leave it all till somebody else lends you a hand. Basically saying right there, things are gonna be okay. Things are gonna pick up. Things are gonna get better. Just don't don't stress. Like it's all right. You're not alone in this world. There's somebody that's going to be there to help you, to hold your hand and guide you through. But it just has a very introspective type of feel. It almost feels like a, a journal entry out of uh, John Lennon's journal. But like, I can imagine this was a big turning point for them and also pop music where, it, it, like I said, it used to be very much about you know, this love song, sing songy type of stuff. But then you get into that and it's like, wow. This person also feels alone. This person also spends time in their room. He, I just imagine John Lennon just being alone in his room, just like writing. And he, he was always the more um, feeling and more introspective of the Beatles. So it's not surprising that this came from him. The next song, again, kind of goes back to kind of a little bit old Beatles form is Michelle. This is Paul McCartney's song. Michelle, my bell. And then he even acknowledges that it's just a good melody that he put words to. Me shall, my bell, these are words that go together well. It's just a nice little melody. And Paul McCartney is very, he's the best uh, musician in the band. There's no real question about that in my opinion. He's the overall best, he's the best ear for melody, sound. He's the best, he's a great pop songwriter. In fact, he's still putting out albums today as a testament to that. It's just a very nice little catchy song and that ends the A side of the album. So the B side of the album, again, I'm gonna skip around here a little bit. The sec I believe this is the second song on the B side and this is called Girl uh, and this is a John Lennon, uh, primarily a John Lennon song. This is basically about falling for a girl who you know is bad for you. Just someone, you know she's full of herself, she's got an ego, she's big headed, you know she's bad for you, but there's something about this bad girl. You think this could apply either way also. All these songs could apply either way. Bad, they're not specifically male, female. It could be female to God, God, girls going after guys that they know ain't good for them, that are bad for them. So it kind of works um, both ways. 
Is there anybody going to listen to my story all about the girl who came to stay? She's the kind of girl who, she's the kind of girl you want so much it makes you sorry. Still, you don't regret a single day. So you know you're going to end up in pain. You know you're going to end up heartbroken. But, you know, I'm going to go through this <laughs> anyway. Um, I've never really gone into anything being that type, but I know the feeling. Like, you don't, you know, there's some people that are just attracted to this, this that bad that bad boy or whatever that's how i've seen it always seen like especially in high school girls that go after these guys that they know are terrible for them but it's like they almost they're gluttons for punishment and want to go through this i, I mean i guess i kind of get it but it's a cool again a cool little step away from the boy bandies type of stuff the, my favorite lyric from the song she's the kind of girl who puts you down when friends are around you feel a fool when she's when you say she's looking good, she acts as if it's understood. She's cool, and what's cool about it, it, after each verse, it's good. So he's taking a hit off the joint, and it's, it goes back, like I said, the weed inspiration. So I thought that's a nice little touch. But yeah, she puts you down in front of your friends. You say she's looking good. She's like, yeah, of course I know I look good. So it's just that type of girl, and she's just like somebody that's not somebody you want to be with. So I'm looking through you is the uh, next song I'm talking about. Now this one I always liked. It's one of my favorite Paul McCartney songs. Again, it has very good melody. It almost has a moment of triumph in it because it's about that moment where like someone who's been kind of BSing you and leading you down the primrose path, you're kind of getting wise to their BS. You're like, oh, I got you. You you took an advantage of my kindness. Use my kindness for weakness. Now I can see what you're all about. So the, like, I'll, I'll try to like, go with the melody as well. I'm looking through you. Where did you go? I thought I knew you. What did I know? I thought I knew you, but I didn't really know you because you're full of it. You're a liar. You're a scammer. You're, you know, you, I, I love all the lyrics from this section. You don't look different, but you have changed. I'm looking through you. You're not the same. Like, you still look the same, as you were when you were kind of a different person and a nicer person, now I can kind of see that you're not. And then it continues on. You don't, so that's just the appearance, right? He's, he's looking at his looks. Okay, you look the same, but I can still see that you're not. And then he gets into how the person sounds because people that are like this that he's talking about, again, could go guy or girl. Doesn't This, this is not uh, gender specific by any stretch. You don't sound different I've learned the game. I'm looking through you. You're not the same. Why, tell me why, did you not treat me right? Love has a nasty habit of disappearing overnight. So you didn't treat me right. Now I'm realizing it. See ya. That type of vibe. You're thinking of me the same old way. You were above me, but not today. So you're kind of still thinking I'm this weak-minded person that's easy to take advantage of, but guess what? I'm not. So I'm now I've got the step up. You were above me, but not today. And then he just kind of repeats some of the lyrics um, throughout the rest of the song, but very, very upbeat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's kind of like a yeah. It's kind of like a celebration song like you want. Now, the last song I'm going to talk about, it's not the last song on the album, but it is my favorite Beatles song and one of my favorite songs of all time. So I'll tell a little backstory, and this is my kind of my entry point to the Beatles. Now, while I did hear songs like I'll Follow the Sun and um, like Good Day Sunshine before this, I never really got into Beatles. It's just like here and there. I'm like, okay, they're good. Um, but I remember there was a time when I, my mom went to New York with my aunt and her friends, and... My aunt and me were kind of like the third wheel, for lack of a better word. So my mom and her friends went off, and me and my aunt just went walk around the park, and we found ourselves in Strawberry Fields, which is the memorial for John Lennon, which is right across in Central Park, which is right across um, from the Dakota building where he lived and was actually killed. And there's a nice little memorial there. It has the song Imagine in there. And sitting next to me and my aunt, me and my aunt were actually having this really good conversation. I was just someone that is not... Um, in my life anymore. This is someone I don't really talk to anymore. So, but this was a time, a good memory I had with her where we were just kind of sharing personal experiences where usually it's like in a family dynamic, we don't get to talk. It's kind of like a very, was a very personal experience. And so I always remember it for that. And also this is someone that's not in my life. So I do have memories of them, although I'm not going to get into that, that stuff, but you know what I mean? So anyway, two seats down from us on the bench was this guy playing this guitar. He was singing these beautiful words. 
and I didn't have a phone, I didn't have a pen and paper, but I just remembered the lyrics. I remembered them in my mind. And I remember the next time I get to a computer, I have to type them in. I was just like replaying them. Like I was just, I was, oh, I was there with everybody the rest of the trip, but I was just playing these lyrics. So the song is called In My Life. This is primarily a John uh, Lennon song. It's really about uh, reminiscent of things past, but an appreciation for the present. And as this is just um, even more so than the last song, this is one that I like then, but even more so now. Um, kind of, you have to kind of go through some muck in life and it, you know good times bad times with different people different places to get to where you are so i'm gonna go through the lyrics there are places i'll remember all my life though some have changed some forever not for better some have gone but some remain all these places have their moments with lovers and friends i still can recall some are dead and some are living in my life i love them all so this is kind of like you know because i kind of live around the area that i grew up in and so I drive by a lot of the places I've been. I've had experiences with friends, with family, um, you know, exes, lovers, ex-lovers, and good times, bad times. And it's just like, you know, it brings memories. Some of the places look different. My high school is different. You know, some of the restaurants I've eaten at looks different. The roads look different. There's, diff it, there's different cars around. But, you know, you, it goes, it takes you back to memories, especially when I'm going by my high school. Like, that's always weird for me. And because there's a lot of good times there, even though I'm not in the building, just driving by, like there are places I remember all my life, though some have changed. And, and some are dead and some are living, but in my life, I love them all. So, you know, there's some people that are, might still be in your life from those memories. There's some people that are no longer in your life from those memories. Friends that are still around, but you just don't associate with them anymore. And also some people that are not around because they died. So again, kind of tapping into some deep emotions here. Again, just like Nowhere Man, very introspective type of song. It kind of gets into a, a lovey song and the, the rest of it because it's an appreciation for the now. Because then he goes into, but of all these friends and lovers... There is no one who compares with you. And these memories lose their meaning when I think of love as something new. Though I know I'll never lose affection for the people and things that went before. I know I'll often stop and think about them, but in my life, I love you more. And then that, that lyric gets repeated at the end, and right in the middle transition there between that and the end is this, I had to look up what it's called, it's called a Baroque. It almost sounds like a piano, it's like a sped up piano. A uh, very old timey uh, type of sound. But yeah, I just love the lyrics there at the end. But of all these friends and lovers, there's no one who compares with you. And these memories lose their meaning when I think of love as something new. Um, it's just very, you know, I went through all this stuff in my life. I've had these experiences with these people, these places. But you know what? I'm happy right now because it led me to you. I'm happy right now. This is, this is the moment. This is what matters. Um, but he he's he's has an appreciation for things past, good or bad, because it led him to where he is now. I also take it, you know, personal myself. Um, very beautiful song. Uh, one of my favorite songs. I don't really get into... There's only a couple songs. There's a song of this and my favorite uh, soundtrack um, from Donnie Darko, like what I would call a funeral song. Under the Milky Way is my favorite song off of that. Um, I don't really like talk of like funeral songs. It's like, I'm, I'm dead. Who would care? Why would I care what songs I play? But kind of that type of uh, vibe. Uh, reminiscent, loving, uh, beautiful song. The rest of the album is very good. The next album the Beatles got into, Revolver, is a probably a technical, uh, more technical, better musical achievement of an album. But this one hits home for me. It's a little bit more personal. I love it. Uh, great album if you've never heard it. Look it up online. If you just want to listen to the songs I talked about, I totally respect that. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even, I'd also say, just say, hey, listen to it all the way through. Um, very nice album. But guys, thank you uh, so much for joining me today for this album uh, review of the Beatles' uh, Rubber Soul. If you have a favorite Beatles song, favorite Beatles album, let me know down below. I totally acknowledge, like, there's, it, it could be all over the place with the Beatles. That's what, that's kind of speaks to them. And it was, again, very nice to go back and listen to some music that I hadn't heard in a long time, especially my favorite song in my life. Um, guys, thank you again for joining me today. I greatly appreciate your time. Y'all take care, be well, and have a great day.